good day, a blessed day. Whoever's fasting, Hashem should give us strength to fast. To fast is not an easy thing to do. You know, we're all attached to food and now we're drinking. But uh, those of us who have the strength, it's a big deal. And we're, what are we fasting? Why? Because it's the fast of Esther. And we have to remember what happened in the time of Purim. And today also, tonight and tomorrow, Purim is such a beautiful day, a day of joy, a, a day of happiness. But the rabbis made sure to uh, incorporate that the day of festivity, the day of happiness, should also lead to giving gifts of food and also presents to people who need them. It's called matanot levyonim, giving tzedakah. The rabbis didn't call it tzedakah. They call it matanot, presents. Why presents? Because it's different than tzedakah. Tzedakah you give because you feel bad for the other person. You know that's important. It's an obligation. You want to help. You can't be selfish. All of that is correct. Matonot, a matana, a gift, a present, it means that you did something good for me. I, I want to show you appreciation. What did this poor man show you? What did he do for you that you want to show him appreciation? So the Rebbe explains that it's very interesting that Purim, every Jew reaches a, a level of sensitivity that you feel that another person did something for you. What did you do for me? You know what you did for me? You're here. You're a Jew. You're, a, you're part of the Jewish people. Hashem created you and I need you and you need me. I'm incomplete without you and you're incomplete without me. I was just five minutes ago speaking to someone here in my office and he was literally in tears. This person used to give every month, used to give tzedakah to my shul and it's sad that now I have to give him tzedakah. Oh. Very sad. And he's oh. a beautiful person. He has a family, you know, and two children. And he, he works every day on, on deals. He's trying. He's not a lazy guy at all. Thank you. God bless you. But, he, he, you know, it's difficult because a person who wants to help and wants to give and wants to be happy and for, if, Hashem controls everything. I'm not going to get into the details right now, you know, spiritually, but what is the meaning behind it? But basically, it says in the Talmud, when Hashem wants to atone for certain sins and cleanse a person, sometimes he, he sends a person certain challenges and trouble, and, 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 and that makes the person more humble, and that's uh, something the person has to overcome with Hashem's help, but uh, it's a process. Anyway, so I'm Purim, it's interesting, this is what I wanna bring out, that it's not just a day of happiness for ourselves, for every person and his family, but actually the mitzvahs of Purim is also to include other people in the process, like the reading of the Megillah. So it's much more uh, of, a, of a joyful occasion when you read the synagogue and everyone's involved, the same thing, the Suda should have a party. It's important to include other people in the happiness. And of course, the mitzvah of giving gifts, Mishlech Manot, Monos, and Ishlerieyu, and Matonis Levyon. So, what does it have to do with the Tanya of the day? Well, this is my interpretation. We're talking here in the Tanya in our chapter now, chapter nine, how to be in control. We shouldn't allow 
the poison of the Eight Sahara to take over. How do we do that? You do it with Hashem's strength. Yeah. But Hashem says, I want to see you do something for me special. And then I'll do something for you special. What can we do for Hashem that will make him happy? That will give us extra strength? Well, if you go out of your way, especially on Purim, but it really should be every day of the year, and you, you, you work on yourself to, to, to give joy to ha and happiness to other people, you will be blessed. You will be blessed in a special way more uh, that you, than you could imagine. More than you could imagine. So it's very important that we put the, these things in, in perspective and we understand that our entire being, the Baal Shem Tov says, a very, very powerful statement, a, a revolutionary statement. That the Neshama comes down in this world for 70 or 80 years till 120 years, as long as Hashem gives us life. And the main reason is to help another person. Even someone you never met before. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Think about it. You didn't come down here just to build a family. You didn't come here um, to make a difference, you know, by uh, being a good person. Yeah, you're a good person. But were you proactive? Did you go out of wet your way to bring happiness to do to do something positive for another person what about shabbos what about kosher what about mikvah what about tefillin what about mezuzah what about learning torah all of that is important but that's not the main thing and hillel said that hillel the great sage in the talmud said that the main mitzvah and the the, the principle the main principle in the Torah is to remember that you should do good for another person. The rest, he said, is a commentary. <laughs> so we're trying here in this Tanya, the chapter 9 in Tanya, it says over here that we should inspire ourselves, our mind and our heart to love Hashem and to fear Hashem and not to listen to the Eitzel Hara, not to be weak. So how are you going to have the strength? So the Talmud says, the Gemara says, that if Hashem would not help us in the process, we cannot accomplish it. But how do we get Hashem to help us? One way is to pray for it. A person is weak, they need Hashem's help. But that's not enough. You have to show Hashem that you're trying to do good for other people. You're trying to help other people. And I'm not talking about only with money. You could help someone by listening to them, by picking up the phone, making them feel good. All this is one second. I got to send someone a Zoom. He wants to come on the Zoom. One second, please. Hold on. Um, Rabbi Smith, I'm sending it to a young man. He wants to listen to the Tanya share while he's in the class. Is that okay? His name is Moshe. Rabbi Smith? Okay. What? I hope. Yeah, there's, there's someone who was in my shul today. His name is Moshe Wertheimer. And, he, and he's, I told him I'm going to be teaching now Tanya. He says he would like to participate. Sure. So I gave, I sent him the link to, to, to the Zoom. Yeah, so if sure. He, if he cl calls in. We'll admit him. him. Yes, we'll, we'll admit him. Thank you very much. Of course. Smith. I should call you. Um, yeah. So here we are. That we're up to the point, part in the Tanya, in, in the, the ninth chapter, we're about uh, two, four, six, 
lines from the bottom. We got to get to the level that we love Hashem completely, even with the Yetzirah. How do you love Hashem, the Yetzirah? He's going to explain. I know this means Shayala Viagia. Shayala Viagia. Viagia, you should go up. And you should come and you should reach. You should come to the level of Avarabba to love Hashem with great love. And a lot of passion. A lot of um, uh, uh, like uh, Chiba is, is to show affection, to show extra love. And um, how does he explain it in the English? Abundant love is supreme affection, surpassing that of ardent love. <laughs> But in a case because of Ava Bitanogim, Lasana Galashem, Edoelam Habo, that there are different levels in love. Just like physically, there's different levels of love. Certain things make you very excited, and certain things not so excited. You love yourself, yeah, everyone loves themselves. You love your children, yeah, everyone. You love your parents. But the love for your children is not the same type of love they love for your parents. Different type of love. You love your spouse. Different type of love. You love your rabbis. You love your, your, your people. Yeah. People love their animals. A pet. It's not the... Uh, can't compare loving your dog to loving your, your, your child. Anyway. Lahavda, lahavda. When we're going to separate, when we talk about mundane things. We talk about Hashem. You got to separate it. So it's written later on in the Tanya. It goes through in detail what does it mean to love Hashem and what are the different levels of loving Hashem. Different ways of expressing loving Hashem. And one of the things he talks about is what she just mentioned here. That there's an Ava, there's a love that's called Ava B'tanugim. It's a delightful love. That you should feel in this world like you're ready, like you you the love and the delight that you that the neshama has for Hashem in the world to come. That means in this physical reality, this as we're here now, we should be able to feel and experience and uh, actually connect with Hashem on a level as if we're ready in the next world. What will that do for us? Well, everyone knows that in the next world, everything is good. There's no, oh, sorry, there's no distractions there. There's no aggravation there. There's no jealousy there. There's no illness over there. There's no problems. There's no worries. There's no anxiety. There's no fear. Everything's good. It's a world of bliss. The world of happiness. Why? They say a joke that when you go to the cemetery, you never hear anyone saying, oh, I want to come back. It's always quiet in the cemetery. Why is it quiet? Because why should they come back? It's a machai in Ganeden. So it's a pleasure to be in a tranquil environment. Why should they want to come back? So how do we le reach this level? How do we live this reality that we should have so much pleasure with Hashem and so much tranquility that we should feel that we're ready in the next world? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe Rabbi uh, Menachem Smith can tell us. He's, he, he's someone we look up to. So he says, Where is this delight, this pleasure for Hashem? Where is it rest in your brain? 
in the brain of Chachma. Vesechal hamesanik baskol Hashem vidias. We ask a saga sichli vichachmas. It starts with the, the brain processing that we want to think about Hashem. And we want to know about Hashem, each one according to their capacity. That's the level of the water we spoke about that that person has liquid in their body and it originates from the brain. That's what it's all about. Just like physically, water makes things grow. And when you think those things the food make you happy, gives you nourishment, gives you sustenance. So spiritually, we're talking about feeling happy, feeling good. We all know that the animal in us wants to uh, have a good time with what? With um, with physical things. Okay. There's nothing wrong to, 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 to you enjoy a physical thing, but we spoke about this a few times that according to the Tanya, you have to infuse in it. You have to incorporate in it Kedusha, meaning that you say, oh, I want to eat it but I want to do it for the sake of Hashem. I'm not going to be just like an animal, a, a horse or an ox or a dog. When they eat, they don't think about God. Can't be. Maybe there's, there, you know, they have a, a, it says that every animal has an angel who's in charge of him. We're talking about physically. It's not shy. It's not possible. Are we animals? When we eat, are we supposed to feel like we're animals? No, we're all supposed to feel we're not animals. We're, 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 we're supposed to be better people, supposed to be holier, we're supposed to be more sophisticated, more elevated. So we could do it. How do we do it? Say, take a, you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recite a blessing and thank Hashem that I have the food. How do we get this piece of bread? How did it happen? Well, there's a process. You have to plant the seed into the ground, and the ground is dirty, it's it's muddy, and they put fertilizer on it, which makes it more much more smelly. It stinks, and from that ground, that's muddy and smelly and dirty, from there comes out a stalk of of, of barley or whatever wheat, and and we and we grind it up. We mix it with water. We're talking about water. It becomes edible for our food. Why did Hashem make it that the food should come from a smelly, dirty place? That's where it comes from. Of course, when you go to the bakery and you buy bread, you don't think about all this. But when he say the bracha, Hamaitzi lecha min haaretz, that Hashem takes bread out of the ground, you realize, yeah, it really comes from the ground. So one of the lessons we can learn from this, Hashem wants to show us humility. Usually we step on the ground. Usually we don't pay attention to the ground. Hashem says, from this ground, you're going to eat from it. You're going to be sustained. You're going to have nourishment from that dirty, disgusting earth. Why? Why? Because Hashem has the ability, has the power to extract from a very low level something that's very significant, something that's very powerful. Only Hashem can do that. That's on a physical level. On a spiritual level, it says in Hasidus and Kabbalah that actually the ground, which is the lowest level physically in our reality, we step, we, we walk on the ground. So that, that means it's the lowest level. All day long, we're stepping on the earth. So Hashem says, it's written in, 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 in Sefi Yitzira, that the beginning and the end are interconnected. Hashem is showing us 
You or us, we, we don't understand Hashem's system. We, Hashem is a different system. His system is totally out of the box that he puts into the ground, which is the lowest level. He puts so much power that it sustains us. Why? To show us that everything has a purpose. Everything has meaning. Everything has a function. The ground if we wouldn't know that in the ground there's resources, there's minerals, there's a lot of stuff going on in the ground. We'd never know. But Hashem made it that things are hidden. We have to reveal it. So this is a lesson. It says that the Jewish people are considered Atem Eretz Chayfetz. We're like the ground. We all have great potential. All we have to do is reveal that potential. There's an explanation that in every place in the world, if you dig deep enough, you will find water. But you have to dig. You have to stop being getting tired of digging. You have to know that it's up to your conviction and your determination you'll eventually get to the water so, every person is you have to reveal in them their great potential you have to know that there are hidden treasures and that's what he's saying over here that really the animal in us we could turn him around that he'll want to be more spiritual. But for that, you, you have to have patience. You have to have um, the understanding. Naches. And, you know, what? Naches. Naches, you have to have the determination that you don't give up. You don't get tired. And for that, you need to be motivated. And to stay motivated, either you got to learn the Tanya, or you also have to have a, a good friend or a mentor or a confidant or a good rabbi who continuously will inspire you. Some people are self-made, you know, they haven't, they, 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 they're just going strong. But for, for most of us, it's not an easy thing to always be with, you know, with inspiration and determination. We get tired. We get burnt out. We lose focus. We get distracted. So how do we get stay at the program? We learn together. The second Lubavitcher Rebbe said that he wants his chassidim, every chassid should have a confidant where he could share with him his private matters. We're talking about spiritual matters, physical also, but spiritual more. Oh, he's, he was mostly referring to the spiritual. He said, because when one Jew shares with another Jew that they have an issue, they have a problem, and the other person tries to help him, it becomes like they, be, they become like a team that they gang up together against the Yetzirah. <laughs> that's what he said. Good deal. Good yeah, deal. That's what he says. Of Chayim, like it's written in the book of Eitz Chayim, which is from the Arizal's student, main pupil. Reb Chaim Vital, Shar Gimel, Peter Gimel. The Rishem Azoya. That what? That over there it says that uh, that there's a something that this that we spoke about that the liquid inside the body makes a person desire all the things the physical matters and he has to know how to elevate it to Hashem. That's what I was telling you. If you make a bracha, a blessing before you eat and after you eat, and you're 
realizing, you think about how the food got to you. You and how and how and how uh, thankful you should be. Not to take it for granted. A lot of things people take for granted. It's a big mistake. Shara Napakliya's tave. That the bad has to become good. But it's a tave mamish. Just like the Eighth Sahara wants us to sin and he wants us to do bad stuff. Shadash and Epically is Tave Gomak Mayat Tave Mamish. We have we have the ability to take the Eight Sahara and turn them around into a Yat Satov. You gotta take off the dirty clothes, just like physically. If a person is smelly, no one wants to deal with them. No one wants to talk to them. Because they smell. They, they, it's disgusting. Well, you ha we have to know that when we sin, we're creating a very bad smell, a bad odor all around us, spiritually. And Hashem doesn't like it. And the angels don't like it. So what are you going to do? You got to cleanse yourself. You got to take a good shower. How do you take a shower for the soul? You have to stop Making trouble, making problems, stop, stop sinning. Who has so he says, utilize it for Hashem Himself. The power to speak is one of the greatest gifts that Hashem has given us. And we could communicate with each other. And also the power to think. That's an unbelievable feeling. So we want the brain and the, the speech. I told someone Breaking the other up. day uh, they need a bracha. So I, yes, I about about an, about a house that they 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 they're, they're closure anyway. So I told him. He asked me, Rabbi, what could I do uh, to get Hashem's blessings? So it was before Mincha. I said, let's pray. And we'll get the answer after Mincha, Marev. We sat down after Mincha, Marev. I said, you got to accept upon yourself not to speak Lush and Hara, not to listen to Lush and Hara, not to speak gossip, not to be a person who gossips about others. If you'll do that, your mouth will become a vessel that you, when you pray, you'll pray with purity. Play, if you, when you play with purity, Hashem will take care of you. So now, as we're speaking, he's in the court. And I hope that he'll give us good news. He took upon himself this mitzvah. Even though, for, you know, it's not an easy thing to accomplish because the nature is you want, want to say... You want, and you want to, but you know what? When you speak bad about someone, someone else is going to speak bad about you. And your lush and horror is a terrible thing. It ruins people's lives. It brings hate or brings uh, jealousy, brings uh, friction and and conflict. And it's not good. It's a sin. It's a terrible thing. Anyway, I want to wish all of you. With all my love and all my happiness, a happy, happy Purim. And thank you very much for being here on this Zoom. And Rabbi Nachum Smith and his beautiful family to continue to have happiness. And uh, Yashukoyak for him, Rabbi Nachum, for bringing me on this Zoom and giving me an opportunity to let me speak, to let me uh, share the holy words of the, of the Alter Rebbe. 
end of the Tanya. And I want to thank everyone for listening. And uh, God willing, we'll be back Sunday morning. And happy Purim again to everyone. Okay, I see Ezra, you have a question. Hello. This is Ben. This oh, is Ben. Ben, I'm sorry. Ben, I'm sorry. I got mixed up. Yeah. I, I, I just wanted to say that I, that I got the, the message of, of Perek 9 finally. That God can make food out of nasty places, nasty stuff that will satisfy both the nefesh and the neshama, the goof and the ruach. Yeah. And Am I correct? Okay. Yeah, so what's the message? I, so I finally got it, I'm saying. <laughs> the message is that I have to keep studying. This parak I understood now. Hey, listen, there's a a lot of information to process and you, everyone you know that by Hasidim says that learning Tanya is similar to the Chumash everyone learns the Chumash on their level so you know whatever you could take from the Tanya it's wonderful but to say that we really understand it thoroughly and completely, it's, it's, it's beyond the scope of our understanding. It completely. We try our best. That's what Hashem wants from us, to try our best. Right, okay, thank, guys, thank have you. a beautiful have day. A a happy, happy Purim to everyone, to all of Am Yisrael. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Rabbi Smith. Thank you, Rabbi Dalton. Uh, uh, okay.